You have the savant acquired syndrome. Yes. That, that means that you became a, a marvel. Yes. By seeing things fragmented, uh -huh. it makes everything look like the motion of everything looks like it's attached to a grid. Math is reality. Is Literally. Reality. Yes. Hello, Jason Paget. Hello, thank you for having me here. And we are here in Puebla in the city of ideas. How, how have you been liking it? It has been wonderful. Um, I've done a lot of lectures and been to a lot of countries, and this has blown me away. Why? It, uh, it's much bigger uh, <laughs> than I thought it would be. It, it's There's a lot of technology. It's new. Uh, and I've, I, I did a TED Talk a while ago, and this is as big, if not bigger, uh, than the biggest venues in the world. Uh, right. Very and, impressive. And you're also from Alaska. Yes, I'm from Alaska. And this is hot for you. This is incredibly hot for me. <laughs> Jason, um, so you are a mathematical genius, that's right? I, some people say that. I don't. I feel embarrassed saying it. Oh, a lot a, of people say it. A mathematical marvel. There we go. There, that's better. Uh, <laughs> and a mathematical artist too. Yeah, I uh, draw what equations look like because a lot of times we can understand things by looking at a picture or a drawing. Whereas if you want to understand something in equations, you got to go to school for years just to understand what the symbols mean. Where you can teach a difficult concept like Einstein's relativity, just the general idea, in two minutes with a drawing, where is in equations, it takes you years. So you make up these drawings or you see them? I see them, literally. I draw what I see. Um, for instance, when I'm drawing the number pi, um, that is geometrically the number pi and in equation, uh, the number pi, and it's also the double rainbow. So when you look at the double rainbow, you're looking at the geometry of pi. And is it your personal way of seeing it, or is it the natural way of seeing it? It's the natural. It's both personal way I see it now because right. of, the, of this injury that I had, but also it's the, the natural way. We are all seeing picture frames when we see something move, but there's a portion of your brain that smooths out the picture frames so that it doesn't look jittery. But all of us see this way. It's just part of your brain makes everything look smooth. Jason. So, you are called, uh, you have the savant syndrome, acquired syndrome. Yes. That, that means that you became a, a marvel. Yes. Can you, can you tell us what you were before that? You were in Alaska, yeah. I gather. W what were you doing? Um, it's, it's kind of funny and embarrassing a little bit. All I did was party, goof off, I, I cheated in high school to graduate with my friends. Uh, uh -huh. I just basically chased girls and went to bars, and that was about it. Uh, and you were interested in mathematics? I hated math. Really? Yep. I didn't even have algebra. Uh, I, in fact, I couldn't even graph a straight line uh, before. It didn't make sense to you? Yeah, it it was... didn't, not only did it not make sense, I just didn't care. I didn't think, I used to say math was dumb and that doesn't apply to anything. And now, I just can't believe I thought that. Okay, and then one night in, in 2002, yep. what happened? Um, I was leaving a little karaoke bar, and uh, these two guys attacked and robbed me. And uh, they came up from behind me. I actually didn't see anything. Uh, they came up behind me and smashed me in the back of the head. And the first time that I got hit in the back of the head, it actually knocked me out. All, all I saw was they hit me, and I saw this little puff of light, like somebody took a picture. Like, like you hear boxers describe when they get knocked out. Right. And the next thing, I was on the ground getting kicked in the face and the head. And, and I didn't know why I was on the ground, uh, why I was being attacked. I didn't even know where I was. Uh -huh. uh, and I tried to fight back, but I was so and hurt were at that point. There were two of them. Yeah, there wasn't much I could do but take uh -huh. it. So. Uh -huh. And then you, I, I, you lost consciousness? Um, the only time I was unconscious was from the first blow. The first blow, I was standing, and the next thing I knew, I was on the ground. And all the, the hits after that, I stayed conscious. Uh, so it was very scary. I remember having this feeling of, I am going to die right now for sure. And that fight or flight instinct came on, and I had no chance to like flee or run. Uh, so I fought, I tried to fight, 
and I grabbed one of the guy's legs and I bit him on the inside of the leg, but he was wearing these big baggy pants. Uh -huh. And so all I got was fabric and I cracked my front teeth when I bit down, uh, which now I have to get my teeth capped because of it. And uh, all these people were watching from the restaurant and nobody helped. Uh, yeah. and, uh, but that's where the, the adventure happened, uh, started. W yes. What happened then? Um, well, what it did is it, it, it changed the way I see things. Instead of things looking smooth, like my hand moving now looks nice and smooth, right. things now look jittery. Um, like, it's, like imagine if you're watching TV, you know how you can hit pause and then pause again and again and you can see picture frame by picture frame by picture frame. That's the way you're seeing me now, for example? Yes. You see me divided on the uh... Yes. Every wow. picture, and, and so like when your hand is moving, it's like a picture, another picture, another picture. Uh -huh. The faster you move your hand, the further apart the pictures get. And the slower you move your hand, the closer together the pictures are. And where did you find out that you were seeing that, that in the hospital? Um, well, that, that I was taken to the hospital that night and they gave me a really strong painkiller pain shot. And it made me all like, I was, like you're drunk, you know. Right. And I remember thinking that the pain shot was making everything look funny. And then uh -huh. it was the next morning when I woke up and the pain medicine had worn off that I realized it, it was not the pain medicine. It was me that was different. Uh, and what else? What else changed? Yeah. There was bad things that came with it. Like I have a, a neurological condition now that makes my muscles twitch and vibrate throughout my whole body constantly. Uh, uh, I have OCD, which is called obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm constantly counting things and I, I worry about germs and I'm always washing my hands. Whereas before, I didn't care about any of that stuff. So you count everything? Or, yeah, I try, or... I try not to now. I actually went to a doctor uh -huh. to help me try to stop thinking about math so much because sometimes it's nice to be able to sit down and not think about oh, it. Of course. And, but it took me years to get used to it. And you, you're not afraid that if, you're, if your condition depends on something that happened to your brain, physically happened to your brain, if you take drugs for your obsession, you might lose the, 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 the ability you, you acquired? Yeah, um, the, the, I worried a little bit about that, but the medication that they gave me didn't change anything. Okay, so. and so now you, okay, you got this compulsion to count, you see time fragmented, and what, what else? Um, pretty much that's it, it's just, well, by seeing things fragmented, it uh -huh. makes everything look like, the motion of everything looks like it's attached to a grid. Uh -huh. And so it makes everything look pixelated, like a TV. And so what I started doing at first, uh, as I started mentally picturing like a piece of graph paper, a grid, like yeah. all the way across my field of view. And as long as I made the grid sufficiently fine, uh, all the motions of everything would line up with a little vertex point on this imaginary grid. And it turns out that's what calculus is. Really? It's slicing things into smaller and smaller, or integral cal calculus, uh -huh. slicing things into these smaller and smaller grids. And so when you see things as picture frames, it forces you to see exactly the way that math works. That, it, that is exactly how they describe things in physics and in calculus, is slicing it up into little picture frames that get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the, the, these uh, images of pi or different equations, where do you see them? In between the, the frames of reality? The, the connection between the frames. So, uh, the connection? Like, yes. Wow. Like, uh, like there's a picture frame here, and then another picture frame here, and the slope of the line connecting the two is actually the most important thing. That's the angle of that line tells me how fast it's moving. And then the next picture frame, how that angle changes, tells me its acceleration. And when you look at it in math terms, it's actually the same thing too. It's just different ways of looking at the exact same thing. And what do you see about this question? Is math imagined or is math a level of reality? Math is reality, is literally. Reality. Yes, space time, which we are all immersed in space-time, is a three-dimensional grid structure, which is just like a piece of graph paper in algebra, but three-dimensionally. And so like, you and I are moving right now through space-time. Relative to each other, we're not moving, but we're spinning on the planet, you know, at about a thousand miles an hour. Right. So, and we're moving uh -huh. through a grid of space-time. Right. And so you can write an equation on a piece of paper that would show you 
moving through a grid. And that's exactly what we're doing through space time. It's the exact same thing. It's just not in number form. It's in geometry form. But numbers and geometry are the same. No, but mathematicians, they try to imagine that. And you are there already. You see it. Yes. They must envy you a lot. Yeah, some of them do, and some of them are, are, they get a little bit angry too. Because I guess because they they've worked <laughs> really hard, you know, right. to to learn things, and some things I just can see, even though at first I couldn't describe it in traditional math terms. Uh, it's just obvious. I think anybody that this happened, if this happened to anybody else, you can't help but see it. So what what, what would be really neat is if like it happened to Einstein. Yeah, well, yes. yeah, well, maybe. What you say, let me try to, to understand it, is that Einstein had the, um, could see for moments that maybe he didn't even know he was seeing it, and then he made a huge intellectual effort to get to the equation to grasp that, yes. right? And, uh, where are you? you're now um, living in Washington. Yes. Right. What are you doing in Washington? Um, I've been doing a lot of lecturing, uh, writing the book, and uh, and working on like getting the, the the movie option, and doing a lot of lectures. And recently, just being a new dad, um, uh -huh. I've been staying at home a lot with our our little girl, because uh, I now have the opportunity to do that, whereas before I didn't. And we have another baby on the way that's going to be born in June. It, it, tell us again the name of your book. Uh, the book is called Struck by Genius. It's, a, it's making a play on getting struck in the head and That's right, and it's better. going to be a movie. Um, yeah, it was optioned as a film by, by uh, uh, Sony and Channing Tatum. Good. And then you know the director? Um, I don't know the director yet. So I talked to one of the screenwriters, but I can't remember his name off the top of my head. And, and who's going to play you? Hopefully Channing Tatum. You know, it's optioned that way, but nothing is a guarantee, you know, in okay. the future. But when they option a movie, it's very likely. Now, I, I guess you, you have discovered certain things that were not known. Uh, and from those things, what is useful? Uh, which is not a very important question, really, but it's, a, it's a anecdotally important. Right, I agree. Um, for what I think is most useful about what happened to me is that I was one of those people that didn't understand math, which most of us are that way. 95% of us don't understand it. And I can teach it in a way now that everybody understands, and I don't have to use math terms. So I can bridge the divide between the, the Einsteins and the rest of us so that we all understand what they're talking about. Even if we don't understand every step, we still understand the idea. And how about, uh, can we get uh, surgically or with chemics to your state? I guess it's a certain part of your brain that it started to work, right. that in most of us is not working. Right. Um, I had functional MRIs done on my brain to analyze what part of my brain uh, was working, you know, relative to uh, a, a, normal, a normal brain. I think it's going to be possible and in the very near future. It's going to be uh, possible. Last year in Scientific Ameri American's uh, July uh, issue, I was in that issue with a doctor named Daryl Treffert, uh -huh. and he is studying savant syndrome, and they are making and designing an implant for to, so that people are going to be able to upgrade their brain. Brain, you'll be able to. At first, it's going to be for people with brain injuries, but they're saying that this implant, uh, they want to be able to, either with an implant or with pharmaceuticals, to be able to induce savant syndrome in everybody. That's so, fantastic. Yes. Well, we'll be happy then from our grandchildren, right? Yes. And you remember uh, Einstein saying we only use 10% of, of our brain. You're a, you're a proof. Uh, yeah, he, it is amazing. If we could use all of our brain or use all of our potential, what we could do is probably unlimited. Well, Jason, it has been a pleasure it, and it has been very illustrating to hear you talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.